wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. I hope you've all gotten a, a pen, an uh, ink pen. Did everybody, has everybody got one? Has nobody gotten a pen? Anybody doesn't have a pen, raise your hand because we want to give you a pen, whether you're a mother or not. Over here, we, got a, we need some pens. Yeah, Pat's here. No, you're not raising your hand. No. All right. If you didn't get a pen, you can get one on your way out today. Okay. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A uh, few announcements this morning. Uh, new Bible study starting. Peacemakers Quilt Club starting out there in the um, sanctuary. You can sign up for that. And uh, got a teacher's meeting this Saturday the 16th at 9 o'clock. Uh, Salt and Light's going to Raleigh on May the 20th. Uh, so you don't have to be a part of that. I mean, you don't have to be a member or anything. Just go, and they're going to Raleigh to help to pray with their legislators. Uh, so a lot of good stuff. Uh, this Wednesday night uh, in my office, we're going to be showing a video of, of what's happening in terms of revival around different parts of the country, and uh, it's really exciting to hear what God's doing in a lot of places, and he's moving all over our nation. So if you're able to come this Wednesday night, come and uh, See a video on revival. Okay, let's have a word of prayer together. <coughs> All right. My name is Andy Pearl, and I came to invite y'all to our fun, fun supper that we're going to have May the 23rd. Have y'all seen the sign up out there? We're going to have a family night, and of course, it's on a very important weekend. It's Memorial Day. Salute to our troops. We are happy to be celebrating with them and with our families. And also, I want to tell you a little bit about it. If you come at 4 o'clock, we got children's activities. They're going to paint your face. We're going to play cornhole. We're going to play basketball. And then we're going to have a pig picking. And the reason we need you to sign up soon, it's got, but you got to sign up by this Friday. This Friday is a very important day because if you don't sign up, we, we're not counting sheep here. We're counting our pigs. we got to know how many pigs we got to get for this pig picking. So we want y'all to come and be sure you sign up because it's a very important day. That's also my birthday, so I'm going to be signed up. And I wanted to tell you something else. We need y'all to bring desserts. We, have, we love to eat around here, especially sweets, so y'all bring desserts. And they're going to have a very important thing for the youth. The youth are having a cake auction. If anybody wants to donate a cake for them to sell, they got lots to do this summer. It's going to be a busy time for them. So we need to support our youth and help with the cake auction. And then after we eat, we're going back outside and have two kinds of ball. Now, one of them was kickball, and the other one I didn't understand. It's either waffle or wiffle or some kind of ball. But anyway, we're going to play ball out there. And I just want to invite y'all to come. Thank you very much. Where'd it go? <laughs> That's my Bible. Okay, she's got sign-up sheets. They're going to pass down the uh, aisles. If you have not already signed up, uh, sign up. That'll be awesome. I did not know that was coming. Uh, so I, I do not apologize, though. Um, all right, praise God. Glad to have you here with us this morning. Uh, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer, we come to you this morning, and uh, Lord, we lift our day to you. Lord, I want to be in over my head today. <laughs> I, I want you to come in such a way, <clears throat> Father God, that, uh, that I don't know where it's coming from. And Lord, I don't handle it. <laughs> I'm not in charge, or neither was, is anyone else here today. I just... Lord God, pray that you will come and your will will be done and, and you will take total control of not only this service but each of our hearts, each of our lives. We thank you today for our mothers. Thank you most of all, Lord, that, that, that you and your divine wisdom and plan structured the family and made it possible for us to have mothers and fathers. And Lord, the way all of that is supposed to work together when we allow you to take control of our family, of our marriages. Lord God, I ask your blessings today on this service, on all our mothers gathered here, those who have gone on, departed from us. Thank you for the role they played in our lives. Lord God, 
I pray today that, Lord, you're just going to glorify your name. <laughs> Lord, that you're going you're gonna to exalt the name of Jesus. That every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus, Jesus is, is God. Jesus is Lord. Oh, Lord God, that we would, would know you today more intimately than we've ever known you before. And, Lord, that we would receive what you have for each one of us. You have something, Lord, for each one of us. You have eternal life for those who do not know today, if they died, whether they're going to heaven or hell. But, Lord, you have eternal life, and you're offering it to them if they will just believe and accept your Son as their Savior. And, Lord, you have something for all of us to receive today. Maybe it's instruction. Maybe it's correction. Lord, maybe it's uh, encouragement. Maybe, Lord, it, it's a humbling thought. But, Lord, whatever it is today, I pray that we would receive what you have for us, Lord, because it's what you have for us, and so it's the best thing for us, and we need it. Whether it's going to hurt a little bit to confess it or accept it, Lord, it's going to be best for us. I pray today that we will receive it, and you will be glorified. In the name of Jesus will be exalted. Oh, Lord God, I just, I didn't want to shut up and get out of the way. You do your thing. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. We're getting ready to worship the Lord together. And uh, I'm glad you're all here today. Uh, God's going to protect us. God's going to watch over us and guard us and keep us. So let's just focus on him. Please stand with us and let's sing and worship and praise his name.
Revelation song, hallelujah, praise you Jesus, Re Revelation song is, is just a, a cool song thinking about the song sung by the angels uh, in the book of Revelation, and Revelation starts off with worship and it ends with worship, and it's just an awesome book, we look forward to that day whenever we can, uh, we can see that happening, and um, when it comes to God, instead of always having a quiet time, don't be afraid to have a loud time, just like the angels are, lift him up, praise him in the workplace, praise him Anywhere you can, lift his name up so that others can see just uh, how wonderful he is, how awesome he is, what he's doing in our lives. It's, it's a great time. He will always be more than anything, more than enough for us, always.
getting ready to take up our offering and uh, also pass out our care cards. If you're a first-time uh, guest with us this morning, we're very glad to have you. Pray that you will take one of the cards as it passed. Fill out your name on the front. I'd like for everybody to take a card. Y'all don't always do this. I'd like for everybody to take a card and on the front of it, put your name and on the back, uh, if there are any decisions or needs, uh, any requests for prayer that we can make in our care team ministry on Tuesday nights, please write that down and we will be more than glad to try to fulfill that request. Uh, so please remember that as we're passing out these cards. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this special day, it being Mother's Day, and I just pray, Father, that all the mothers has a good day and a safe day, and I just yes. thank you, Father, for all the mothers that we do have. Father, I just ask now that you be with George as we hear his service or his sermon, and we just thank you, Father, for having this day, and thank you for this offering, Father, that it may go to your whatever you you want it to go to, Father. Father, I just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. because I get emotional. Um, I found this funny thing on YouTube. Um, it was to the William Tell Overture. It was these two mothers that were saying all the things that mothers say to their children through the course of the thing. And it was really funny. And I got a big kick out of it. Um, but there are, I know that all the mothers here have had this happen to them when you were growing up and your mother said things to you, you in your head you went you know that is something I am never going to say to my kids ever 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 it's not going to come out of my mouth and I know that when my girls came along and they would do something and all of a sudden I would say what I said I would never say and I go my mother just jumped out of my mouth and you know they, they, that to me is funny, you know, because mothers, they just do that. And you're trying to protect them and you, tr you love them and you want them to know that, you know, there are just some things you should do and some things you shouldn't do. And one of the things that my mom did teach me was that I was special. There wasn't anybody like me. I knew I wasn't going to make it through. <clears throat> but this song that I'm about to sing talks about the fingerprints of God. And each child is unique. Each child is special. There is no one else like them. That's something I want my girls to know. That they are special. And I want all children here, whether you're grown or whether you're little, to know that you are special. I can see the tears filling your eyes And I know where they're coming from They're coming from a heart that's broken in two By what you don't see Person in the mirror Doesn't look like the magazine Oh, but when I look at you It's clear to me that I can see the fingerprints of God When I look at you I can see the fingerprints of God And I know it's true You're a masterpiece 
that all creation quietly applauds and you're covered with the fingerprints of God yeah yeah never has there been and never again will there be another you fashioned by God's hand and perfectly planned to be just who you are and what he's been creating since the first beat of your heart is a living breathing priceless work of art and I can see the fingerprints of God when I look at you I can see the fingerprints of God and I know it's true you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds and you're covered with the fingerprints of God yeah Just look at you, you're a wonder in the making, oh and God's not through, no, in fact, he's just getting started, and I can see the fingerprints of God, when I look at you, I can see the fingerprints of God. And I know it's true, you're a masterpiece that all creation quietly applauds. And you're covered with the fingerprints of God. Yeah, yeah. You are covered with the fingerprints of God. Yeah. covered with the fingerprints of God. Yes, you are, yeah. You are covered with the fingerprints of God. Yeah, yeah. use this mic. Uh, got a young lady that I asked uh, to do it. Church. Yep. Children's church. <laughs> Never know. Who's taking children's church? There we go. All right. Everybody, uh, children's church, follow these those lovely ladies out that door over there. All right, very good. This time I'm going to ask Kim Green if she will come uh, forward. And uh, Kim did something this past Thursday on National Day of Prayer. I'm telling you what, she really got out of her comfort zone. She's really getting out of her comfort zone right now. You want to stay here or you want to go up there? <laughs> stay here. I want her to tell you what she did. We think, I'm just one little person. I can't do but so much. Kim is very quiet and shy by nature. I taught her in Bible back many years ago. Well, not too many years ago, but a few years ago. Uh, and go ahead, Tim. Kim, you tell them what, what happened. Pray for her. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, okay, so Miss Ann, she was like, you know, at the Kinley Fire Department on National Prayer Day, or National Day of Prayer, um, they're going to be at the Kinley Fire Department. And, you know, I work at Manheim, North Carolina, and... <clears throat> I remember a couple of years ago that we done it at the flagpole at Mannheim. And I was like, why don't we ask Miss Ellie if we do it at work? And um, they're like, well, you ask her. And I was like, okay, well, I'll ask her. So I finally got the nerve up. Well, actually, Drew Starlin actually helped me and because um, he was in our office. And she's like, yeah. So then it comes to, well, who's going to lead it? And I was like. Okay, I'm not good at speaking in public because, you know, I don't like crowds. 
So this is it's pretty big. <laughs> well, um, so, you know, I prayed about it, and I was like, okay, well, I'll eat it. So, like, I got on the National Day of Prayer website, and Jack Graham had wrote a, a special prayer, and I was like, well, we'll read it, and Anne's like, well, let's read it, well, there was three of us. We do a Bible, sp- a Bible study Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at work, and there's three of us right now, and my prayer is that we'll get a lunchroom full, and, um, my hands are shaking. <laughs> and, That's um, good. You're doing great. I know. <laughs> so, you know, I got everything together, and um, we ended up having 26 people at the flagpole because Miss Ann sent out an email, and I brought up um, the Second Chronicles 714 and told them to pray, you know, at 714 in the morning, 714 at night, and we, get, we ended up getting the, the cards um, the true life true life.org, life.org. and uh, we passed him out. Well, we told him, you know, we're not trying to overwhelm you. You know, you don't have to take one if you don't want to. And um, I had several responses that, you know, they thanked us. And and I told everybody, and I told Miss Ann, I told several of my coworkers, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'll tell people yes when they ask me to do things, but I'm always telling God no. So I've got to start doing that. Amen. Sorry. Amen. Kim, thank you. God bless you. The neat thing to me was I knew I was going to ask Kim to do that today, but I, I, she didn't know I was going to ask her to do that. <laughs> and then God brought her here, and hey, it was it's awesome. I tell you what, folks, God can use you. We need to be used. As I've been, we've been preaching on revival lately, and... Uh, He's, Jesus is our only hope for this nation. And I know people are telling us more and more, you can't do that, you can't say that. And then they're telling us we've got to do what they want us to do. Uh, and, and we can't say anything or stand up uh, for our principles, but we've got to. We've just got to do it in love, do it in, in, in the right spirit. But we have got to stand up. Revival, awakening has to come to our nation. It's the only thing that's going to save our nation from the bad road we're headed down. And I, I'm very fearful for my children and grandchildren. I'm going to not do the, the video. Uh, sorry, guys. I ran out a little time here. So, uh, And I'm very interested and exciting, excited about preaching my message this morning because <laughs> I'm going to preach on what every woman needs. Uh, I've been telling this to a few ladies this week, and they said, well, who made you an authority on what every woman needs? And I said, I'm not an authority, but I know somebody who is an authority, and that's God and the Word of God. And so bear with me. But really, this morning, I'll talk to you women some, but really it's a message on what every man, woman, and child needs. Uh, We need love, and our mothers need love. They're made to be love magnets and to, and to give out love and to fuse love in their lives. And as Kim just sang about her mom and shared, you know, the, if you have a good mom, it, it's a wonderful thing to have. Uh, and she needs to know not only, uh, she, she not only needs to love her children, but she needs to know that her children love her. That She needs to know that she's needed and appreciated and respected. Uh, I read this story this past week by Irma Bombeck, who used to be a prolific writer. And she said that uh, she had three children. She said she first, after four or five years of motherhood, thought that it was a temporary condition and not a calling. And she later uh, uh, had a reassessment of that. She talked about taking a lot of time out of your life and uh, long hours. to, to be a mother. And she was talking about one occasion where she had her three children and they're all young and, and they were walking out of a supermarket and her youngest little toddler spied a bubble gum machine with the glass bubble in it and he ran to the bubble gum and wanted in a loud voice screaming, give me, give me, give me gum, gum, gum. And she went over and she had her hands all full. You know, mothers need an extra pair of hands. And she's got the other two in tow. And she's trying to extract her young un from the, from, the, from the bubble gum machine. And he's yelling and holding on. And he pulls it over. And the glass breaks. And bubble gum balls go everywhere. 
About this time, a, tr a crowd begins to come up <laughs> and gather around, and she begins to uh, discipline her child in her voice by saying, you're never going to watch another cartoon as long as you live. And if you keep acting like this, you're going to end up making license plates one day. So she chastises her little boy, and he tries to stifle his, his snobs, and he starts looking around at the crowd staring down at him. And then she said, he did something that I will remember the rest of my life. He, she said, in, in his helpless quest to be comforted, he turned to the only one he knew his emotions could be trusted with me and he threw his arms around my knees and he held on for dear life she said i had humiliated him i had chastised him and and i had berated him in front of all those people but i was still all that he had that single incident she said defined my role as a mother i realized i was a major force in my child's life She said, the easiest part of being a mother is giving birth. I don't know. I've seen that four times. I know it's painful. The easiest part of my life is giving birth. The hardest part is showing up every day. And uh, I just want to thank all of you mothers for all you do. Thank you for showing up. And you people who have mothers, you need to tell your mother while she's still on this earth that you're thankful for her showing up every day. Yesterday we were out doing shine. That's when we go out in the community and <clears throat> uh, talk to people, pray for people, uh, hand out truelife.org cards or Kenley Baptist cards and invite people to our church. And I ran into a, a man yesterday at the gas station up there, BP station, and uh, he said he was down from Washington, D.C., and he'd gone to Selma. He was raised in Selma. He'd come down all the way from Washington, D.C., to place flowers on his mother's grave. I thought, what, what an...